I like that. It's, it's a bit creepy. Hey guys, welcome back with another episode of the E-Ray Touch Tutorials. Today we're going to take things a little bit simple and I'm going to show you how to use the E-Ray Touch not just as an instrumentalist but also as a vocalist and how you can map your own vocal EFX or autotune or any sort of effects that you want using your voice on the E-Ray Touch on stage. Let's go! As a vocalist myself, not just also a producer, but Sometimes I like to be on stage and showcase my voice through different microphones, but also having a nice uh, control change feature to, to play with with my hand. I want to make my voice more expressive. So for this uh, layout, I'm thinking, okay, I want to do maybe some faders so that I can control the level of how much I want the autotune to go in. So let's jump right in. We are going to open the E-Ray Lab and I'm going to drag in a 2D fader, like an auto filter. I'm thinking that would, that would really be a cool idea. Then how about we put in some 1D faders? I'm gonna add another one. So right away, I have these three faders in my head. I know which one I'm gonna map to which effect. So let's first of all color them. Maybe I'm gonna make it green, why not? Let's configure them. So we're going to go to the Tune tab and we're going to make sure that every element is set to a different control change parameter. So here we have channel one, perfect. On the 1D fader, let's enable control change, um, just in case. We'll also put this on channel two so that we can map a different channel to it, also in case we need it. And the third one, I'm going to map it to channel three control change is enabled in case we want to map. What I mean by control change enable here is that you are also capable of uh, adding pressure in case you want to create a pressure effect. As you, as you know, our E-Ray Touch is, is an MPE controller, so you, you can really create a super expressive sound through pressure, gliding, pitch bend, all of that good yummy stuff. Um, but for me, I like to just keep it simple. I put on two, three faders, two 1Ds, one 2D, and map them each one to a different channel. Then I'm going to head over to Ableton quickly. Um, for Ableton, I'm going to use three audio channels. So I'm going to delete this, this. OK, add another audio track. So for the sake of organization, I'm going to name this purple. 2D, and then I'm going to name this green 1D, 1D fader, and pink 1D fader. Also, it's a little bit of a mind boggle here, so let's uh, make the green color green, because sometimes our brain gets fussy when we see green and blue. And then pink, we'll put that in pink. So. What I like to use the most actually is a software called Antares. Great, great software for vocalists because it, it really has really amazing presets to use. I love their plugin um, Autotune EFX. There you go. I'm not going to go into the details of the software here, but it's pretty simple. You choose your, uh, your input type. So I'm a low male um, key. Let's go for like F sharp minor. For the green fader, I think I'm going to go for a dark, dark, like alien, like demon voice. So I'm going to go ahead and dark motor. Let's try that. Of course, you have a microphone connected. So let's let's see if that works. There we go. Hello, hello, testing. I like that. It's, it's a bit creepy. All right, cool. So let's put that for the green one. Um, we didn't map anything yet. I'll show you how to map everything in a second. But now we're just putting all the different effects. Let me turn this off because it sounds funny when I speak. Pink one, let's go ahead and drop the same EFX. Um, and then maybe for this one, I go for like a vocoder, like a bright vocoder. Let's see how that sounds like. Mm, what you say? Yeah, that's good. All right. So, auto filter. We, I want to map the, the filter, so let's say I'm speaking here. Hello, hello. So you have this 
I want to map this effect, the frequency filter, and I also want to map the resonance. So how do you do that? So let's start with a purple fader. Um, the first thing you want to do is uh, to know what you want to map. So right here, I'm in auto filter. I want to map filter frequency. So I'm going to click the fader on my array touch. Command or control M on Windows or Mac on your Ma on your Ableton. Press the frequency that you want to map in, and press the um, axis of your actual element, and move it around a little bit. Make sure it's at maximum, and then automatically press Control M again, and it should be mapped. There you go. I ha had this question before. Hey Omar, like it's always mapped to the Y axis, no matter how much. I do the command M and I move I move the X axis, but for some reason it never maps. Well, that's that's a good question because in order automatically it maps the Y axis, but you have to map the X axis by long pressing the base clef. You have X and Y. If the element has both, use both to map either. If the element has none, map none. Just make sure to press before you map. You want to map the X to something, press it. So we click on our element. Make sure it's at maximum. Then we hold the base clef. We realize it has X and Y. There's no X, obviously, because it's a 1D fader, so it's always going up. There's a Y. What we want to do is, as, as we said before, we click Command or Control M on Ableton. We hit the global mix, and we press Y. So that means that we are mapping the Y element of this element into the global mix of Ableton. This is the most important part. Always turn off MIDI mode or MIDI mapping mode before you go back to your layout. So now you go back and you can see, voila, the global mix level is now specifically and particularly moving. Super cheers. This is the project that I take to my show. Subscribe, or like, leave a comment, and we can't wait to see what you guys do. Stay updated because we post a lot of tips and tricks here. Follow and like to stay updated and see you in the next time.